Hey, come on in. I've been looking for you. I always like company. And come on in. The coffee's ready. And I thought I'd share some of this, these with you. They're called Scorpa. The Scandinavian people like them. They, they are made out of bread and they're hard and they have the taste of cardamom, which is kind of an unusual flavoring, but they're good. And so my daughter visited Ikea in San Antonio and brought some home to me and it's a treat. So I thought I'd share with you today. Welcome. And I want to talk to you just a little bit about miracles. Have you had a miracle this year? I think one of the main miracles I got, I'm here. I'm here this whole year. <laughs> here I am. And sometimes I wake up in the morning and I think, why am I still here? But I'm awfully glad I am. Today I want to talk to you from John 6, 12 and 13. This just stood out to me. And that's called a rhema when there's a word that just speaks to you like this. So it says, when they had all had enough to eat, he said to his disciples, gather the pieces that are left over, let nothing be wasted. So they gathered them and filled 12 baskets with the pieces of the five barley loaves left over by those who had eaten. This is the story of the miracle of the feeding of 5,000 men. Now they don't say how many women and children, but they were there too. I don't know about you, but if I have men at my table, they always eat more. You might have to have more meat, more potatoes, a whole lot more food if men are gonna eat. Women are more dainty. No. I will just have a small slice, thank you. But men eat a lot. So there were 5,000 men, and the Bible says that they were hungry. They didn't know what they were gonna eat. They had been there listening to Jesus speak. And so Jesus had said to his disciples, give them something to eat. And Philip said, my goodness, eight months wages wouldn't buy enough to feed all these people. But there was a miracle. A little boy shared his lunch. He just had bread and fish, and that was enough for a miracle. And this is what I, I stood out to me. Jesus said, after the miracle, after they'd all been fed and their tummies were really full, he said, gather up the leftovers. Let nothing be wasted. What did they do with those? They gathered them up and there were 12 baskets full of leftovers, full of leftover bread. What did they do with it? The Bible doesn't say, but I thought there was one for each disciple. Each disciple got a basket full of leftovers. A doggy basket. Yeah. So what do you do following a miracle? Do you make a statue? Do you make a statue to the bread and the fish? Or what do you do after a miracle? Do you forget about it? I remember when I was growing up, mother was good at leftovers. We were seven kids and then with the parents, nine. Very often we had leftovers, but she was genius. She knew what to do with them. Dry bread makes great bread pudding. Mmm, I can just smell it now. Mama made the best bread pudding with raisins. Chili and stew taste better the second day. They're good leftovers. You can take leftover meat and chop it up and put it on baked potatoes. Oh, that's good. You can make a gravy, pour it over biscuits. You can do a lot with leftovers. Don't throw them out. You've got a treasure there. So what I wanna to say today is don't waste your miracle. 
If God has done something wonderful for you, don't waste it. Jesus said to gather up everything that's left over. Don't, he, he said specifically, don't waste. Don't waste it. Let nothing go to waste. Share your story. Tell it to the next generation. You've been given bread, all this bread left over, and I can't have but thinking. The bread that we have to share is the bread of life. We can share that. We might have only a couple, maybe just one or two pieces, but share them. Tell somebody your story. Everybody likes a story. Everybody wants to hear about a miracle. And I love the way Jesus treated women. When they saw him after he rose from the dead, he said, go and tell my disciples. They had just seen a miracle. They saw Jesus, the risen savior. And he said, go and tell, go and tell. Oh, I think they must have been thrilled to be able to tell it firsthand. I just saw Jesus. I saw him. No, the disciples weren't too sure about it. That's one reason I like to minister to women. They're quick to believe. <laughs> and as you tell them, in a group of women, you can say, isn't Jesus wonderful? He's so wonderful. And they say, yes, yes. And right away, they want to tell somebody else. So if you've had a miracle this last year, share it. Don't let your basket just sit up on a shelf. He gave them the leftovers to share. And I don't know, maybe the disciples could go around to people that weren't there and share some of that bread. I don't know what they did with it. I doubt that they made bread pudding, but would sure be good. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, share your story. Be quick to share the bread. Be quick to share your miracle. I have seen God work this year. And you might say, well, I prayed for a miracle and it didn't happen. But there are lots of little miracles. There are lots of little ones. During the freeze, I never lost electricity. That was a miracle for me. I could invite family and friends over. We could have fellowship and I loved every minute. I loved having the company. I never lost electricity, a miracle, a piece of bread left over. God is good. You've been given a miracle of some kind, share it. The greatest miracle of all is that we're children of God. That's the greatest miracle of all. And he would look at us and say, yes, you're worthy to die for. You're worth it. I'm gonna give my life for you. That's a miracle. Tell your friends. Don't let your bread dry up on the shelf. Share it. How about some coffee?